Our inaugural workshop was everything I've ever dreamed of. And, and I started realizing that we had a huge need in our CRC community, our cancers community, for community. There was no community. There were a bunch of people that were telling us what we needed. That wasn't what I wanted. And so I decided to start Colon Town, which started seven years ago. Hi, I'm Manju George, and I like working with Colon Town. I kept searching for a purpose, and I feel like this gives me purpose. Patient empowerment, um, being an advocate, I just want to help people that are initially diagnosed. I relate to Erica's story about needing community because I was 23 when I was diagnosed with stage three rectal cancer. I am a 13 plus year stage four survivor and really want to help spread the word about early detection, but but really give others hope and inspiration. My husband has stage four cancer, and so my purpose of wanting to be part of Colon Town is to try to not only advocate for him, but for others as well. And when I came across Colon Town, it was suddenly all this community and people who, who got it. I just typed colon cancer into Facebook and the first place I found was Colon Town, and I've never had to go anywhere else. I found everything I needed. I don't even know what other, I mean, I've heard of other like places that you can go for support. I've never, just never had to do it. Believe me, this is like going to college in your disease. And so I talked to Chris at ASCO about coming and joining us and telling us, you know, what he did and what he believes about the clinical trials process as it's set up. and maybe some of the issues we have in our discussion groups that we might think about improving. And mm -hmm. take it away, Chris. Uh, I'm Chris Heary, i uh, medical oncologist. As soon as I saw what this was about, I just thought it was a good way to help people communicate and understand what's going on a bit in clinical trials. And when I hear that, when I hear people say, you shouldn't even consider clinical trials till you've exhausted all standard of care, you should push back and say, wait a minute, there's standard of care in that clinical trial. So I know if it were me and somebody said, well, would you want to do something that increases your chances of a long life, hap you know, living well early on when maybe you have the best chance at it? Or would you like to go through the whole process and then just throw darts at a dartboard and hope you get lucky? I'd, I'd start from the beginning. And that's, so when people say it's not ethical, I think it's because they're not really putting themselves in the position of the patient. So when you're stage four, when you read other people's stories and they say, I was diagnosed at stage four three or four years ago, and here I am today, NED, despite what the doctors told me, that gives a person like me hope. The constant reminders of death, they're everywhere. There's no positive reinforcement about living a life, and I found that in, in Colon Town, and I've been a part of it ever since then. This is a glow stick. When you hear the news that you have cancer or you're a caretaker, caretaker, all of us are in this state right here. But in order for this to work, hear that? You gotta be broken. All of us have been broken. And notice this, I'm breaking it a lot. It takes a lot. You're gonna have to be broken again and again and again. But when you're broken, look at this. You glow. That's our responsibility. Because there's so many people. As soon as Charles started to speak about his experience, I started to cry. And then I watched pretty much everybody start to cry. And it's not just because it's sad or that it's difficult, it's because it is hopeful, but also just having someone who has just been there and is discussing it in a way where it's like, oh, that was me. That was, you know, that was me in a ball on the floor. Like, I hear you, I get it. Excuse me. There's so many people. They in the dark. They in the dark. They are relying on us in our broken states to shine. And when we shine, 
You tell your story. Sarah, you tell your story. You talk about Pam. Robin, you tell yours. Everybody, when you tell your story, you illuminate. And look at how far we can come from that. It's not a death sentence. We're all living. So why is Colin Town so important? Because Erica, she started shining years ago. <laughs> Everybody that's in here, you started shining. And here I am, a person who felt somewhat out of place. It's not a lot of African Americans in Colin Town. It's not a lot of it's not a lot of male voices in Colin Town. So when I was approached about coming, I was on the fence. I was like, man, it's, I'm gonna be there. Probably gonna be the only guy. <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that I came because I see so many glowing individuals. Y'all don't. We don't understand sometimes the power that we have. Continue to do what you're doing. All of you are glowing. I see it. I needed it. I'm so happy that I came here this weekend. I apologize for tearing up. My goal was to not to cry, but when it's coming from the heart and you've lived it, sometimes you can't help it. See, I told you. I told you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.